So there's rumors going around and a story that I guess has been leaked that Sean Duffy, the acting administrator of NASA, is about to announce plans to seriously launch a nuclear reactor to the moon by 2030 to be used for a lunar base to power the lunar base, especially during lunar night, which can last up to 14 days. So your standard solar power and battery setup isn't going to work during those time periods. This idea isn't new, and it's something that NASA has already been working on for several years. To be clear, these are not RTGs, uh, radioisotope thermoelectric generators, that generate electricity by the heat from the decay of the uranium, but it's less than a kilowatt of power for most of those systems. Can be useful for satellites and rovers and things like that, but to power of a base that humans are going to be living in, you're going to need a little bit more. So the idea is sending a fission reactor, which we understand we've been using them for many, many decades now. And in case you missed it, NASA has already been working on this. Seven years ago, they already developed a small system that could generate up to 10 kilowatts of power. Not only did they study the design and come up with a few different concepts, they actually built prototypes and tested them with the Los Alamos National Laboratory, where we do all of our nuclear research. They tested it out under several conditions and got it to work. There were a couple of times where it generated less than 10 kilowatts of power, but still a pretty decent system that could be connected together with other reactors to get the goal that NASA has been looking for for the past couple of years of having 40 kilowatts of power. Despite having those successful tests with their system, NASA still reached out to industry to see if they could come up with a better proposal to have something that could generate more power and be within a weight limit so that it could be easily deliverable by future lunar landers. NASA was looking for the weight or how heavy these things would be to be under six metric tons. So that would still require one of the at least medium to large size landers, but still within the realm of possibility. In a partnership with the Department of Energy, NASA awarded $5 million to three different teams to come up with their own proposals for a 40 kilowatt system. Now, back in 2022, NASA awarded contracts to Lockheed Martin with BWXT, and then we also had Westinghouse, which was partnered with Aerojet Rocketdyne, and then we had IX of Houston, Texas, which is a joint venture between Intuitive Machines and X Energy. Why have I never heard of them before? In any case, they were supposed to partner with Maxar and Boeing. Now, again, this was just a $5 million contract awarded to each of these three teams just to study the idea and to come up with concepts of their own that could work in theory. That was phase one, and it wrapped up after a 12-month study, and in 2024, NASA talked about how they were looking at their designs for this and were pretty happy with the results that they'd gotten because all three of the proposals were very different. Here, here's the specific wording. NASA designed the requirements for this initial reactor to be open and flexible to maintain the commercial partner's ability to bring creative approaches for technical review. There was a healthy variety of approaches, and they were all very unique from each other, said Lindsay Calden, Fission Service Power Project Manager at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. We didn't give them a lot of requirements on purpose because we wanted them to think outside the box. However, NASA did specify that the reactor should stay under 6 metric tons and be able to produce 40 kilowatts of electrical power, ensuring enough for demonstration purposes and additional power available for running lunar habitats, rovers, backup grids, or science experiments. In the U.S., 40 kilowatts can, on average, provide electrical power for 33 households. In any case, that was then, and this is now, and what Sean Duffy wants is a 100 kilowatt system, which is not part of the scope of that study that NASA has already awarded money to, $15 million so far to do those studies for a 40 kilowatt system. And Duffy would like this to be ramped up and sped up so that 
we can actually be competitive and try to get this thing onto the moon before the Chinese reach the moon. And their first human landing right now might be in 2030. So there's a deadline. Now, as of last year, NASA's plans were to extend the three Phase 1 contracts to gather more information before Phase 2, when their industry partners would be solicited to design the final reactor that would be demonstrated on the moon, at least I think so. So this is a really interesting development to me that Sean Duffy is pushing this to move forward, be accelerated, and be more powerful at a 100 kilowatt system instead of 40 kilowatt system. Where is he getting this from? Is he getting this during his briefings? He's still new to the job. He's still in the process of getting briefed by all the different department heads and the directors from the different NASA centers. So he's still new and he's doing okay. I'm still on the fence about him, but there have been a few things like this that I am actually encouraged by. Another thing that's been encouraging to me when it comes to Duffy is how he's talking about wanting to accelerate plans to replace the International Space Station. And I'm assuming get a little bit more organized with the LEO Destinations program. What he's saying is that the biggest problem right now is that they're not distributing enough funds to the different companies that they're working with that are building their own private space stations. So let's get that ball rolling and make sure that we have a replacement ready before the retirement of the International Space Station. Matter of fact, speaking about the retirement and Sean Duffy, for the first time in eight years, the heads of both NASA and Roscosmos met in person for the first time. Roscosmos has a new administrator, which they call a general director, named Dmitry Bakanov, who has had the job since February of this year. Sean Duffy has had the job for almost a month now. But apparently this meeting went really well, and Roscosmos, or at least Russian News, made a pretty big deal out of it, and NASA made almost no mention of it. During this meeting, though, Bakhanev and Duffy talked about ways that they could continue collaborating with each other, confirming that they're still going to be swapping seats on SpaceX Dragon and the Soyuz capsules to deliver astronauts and cosmonauts to the space station, reaffirming that they will continue to participate in the space station until at least 2028, and... <laughs> Bakhanev even put forward this idea of using three progress vehicles to deorbit the space station instead of the U.S. deorbit vehicle that NASA is paying SpaceX to develop. Whether or not that proposal will be accepted is another thing, but he at least floated the idea. Anyway, what do you guys think about these developments? We were already working on this program to send a nuclear reactor to the moon by 2030, if not a little bit later than that. We'll see. Is this going to slow down the program by increasing the requirements to 100 kilowatts? Or should we just connect a couple of their 40 kilowatt systems together to reach that goal of 100 kilowatts? I mean, even the one that NASA already developed that can get up to 10 kilowatts, that could probably be, be delivered by some of the smaller landers right now. So I don't understand why we don't just loop a couple of those together instead of spending all this money on the big aerospace primes to study the idea of doing it themselves. I don't know. I don't get it. What do you think about this? I certainly think it's a good idea to do this and have more electrical power so that we can have a continuous lunar presence and keep expanding and someday have a colony there. That would be amazing. With the right will, the right drive, and the right incentive, I think we could do it. I think we could actually pull it off. I think that we could put this technology together in whichever configuration that NASA deems best and get this going in less than five years. I think we could actually do it. Whether or not the political will will be there and NASA will actually get the support and the authority to spend the funds needed to make this happen is another story, but we have the technology. I think we can do it. In any case, be sure to share your thoughts and give us a like on this video if you enjoyed this quick update. 
If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime we upload a new video. And consider becoming a member to help us support making Space News videos like this, and also so that you can get exclusive content. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month, and I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has been supporting us so far. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Space Mike, and until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.